Hello CUBE friends, and welcome back to Vegas. Lisa Martin here with John Furrier. This is our third day of coverage of AWS reInvent. There are somewhere between 50,000 and 60, 70,000 people here. The excitement is palpable. The energy in the room has been on fire since Monday night. John, we love talking, uh, we, will, we love reInvent. Yeah. We love talking about AWS and its incredible ecosystem of partners and we're going to be doing that next. Yeah, I mean, 10 years of theCUBE, we've been here since 2013, watching it grow as, a, as the cloud computing invention and then the ecosystem has just been growing, growing, growing. At the same time, innovation, and that's this next segment with the company that we both have covered deeply Boomi is going to be a great segment. We have, to it. we have, and speaking of innovation and Boomi, we have a four-time CUBE guest back with us, Ed McCoskey joins us, Chief Innovation Officer at Boomi. Ed, it's great to see you in person. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. What's going on at Boomi? I mean, I know up and to the right continues, we'll go this way. What's going on? Yeah, we continue to grow. Um, we're really focused with uh, AWS on the cloud and app modernization. Most of our projects and many of our customers are in this modernization journey from an enterprise perspective, moving from on-premises, um, trying to implement multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, that sort of thing. Uh, but what we're really seeing is this modernization choke point that a lot of our customers are facing in that journey where they get a, a, they just can't get over the hump and a lot of their, they come to us with failing projects where they're saying, hey, I've got maybe this anchor of a legacy data source or applications that I need to, I need to bring in temporarily or I need to you know, keep, keep filling that. So we help with integrating these workflows, integrating these applications and help you know, that lift and shift and help pro our customers' projects from failing and, and quickly bringing themselves to the cloud. You know, Ed, we've been talking with you guys for many, many years with theCUBE and look at the transition, how the market's evolved. If you look at the innovation going on now, it's, I won't say it's an innovator's dilemma because there's a lot of innovation happening. It's becoming an integrator's dilemma and I was talking with some of your, your staff, booth traffic's up, great leads coming in. Um, you mentioned on the keynote and the slide, I mean, the world kind of spun in the direction of Boomi with your, all your capabilities around integration, understanding how data works. Yeah. All the themes here at reInvent kind of like are in that conversation talk track that we've been mentioning and Boomi, you guys have been building around. Yeah. It, what, to explain why that's happening. Am I right? Am I getting that right? Or can you share your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're in a great spot. I mean, given the way the, the economy's going today, people are, again, trying to do more with less but there is this modernization journey that I talked about, and there's an explosion of SaaS applications, cloud technologies, data sources, et cetera. And not only is it about integrating data sources and, and automating workflows, but implementing things at scale, making sure you have high data quality, high you know, um, data governance, security, et cetera, and Boomi sits right in the middle of providing solutions of all of that to make a business more efficient. Not only that, but you can implement things very, very quickly because we're a low-code platform. It's not just about this hardcore technology that's really hard to implement. You can do it really quickly with our platform. So. Speaking of transformation, one of the things John does every year ahead of reInvent is he gets to sit down with the CEO of reInvent and really kind of does a great, if you haven't seen it, check it out on saleconangle.com, really kind of a preview of what we're going to expect at the show. And one of the things Adam said to you was, CIOs, CEOs are coming to me not wanting to talk about technology, they want to talk about transformation, business transformation. It's no more, not so much about digital transformation anymore, it's about transforming businesses. Are you hearing customers come to you with the same, help us transform our business so we can be competitive, so we can meet customer demand? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's, not, it's no longer about tools and technology and, and providing people with paint to, paint to paint on a canvas. Uh, we're offering solutions on the AWS marketplace. We have five solutions that we launched this year to get people up and running very quickly based on business problems, um, from disbursement to lead to cash with Salesforce and NetSuite, to um, business to business integrations and EDI dashboarding and that sort of thing. We also have our own marketplace that provide these solutions and give our customers the ability to visualize what they can do with our platform to actually solve business problems. Again, not just about tooling and technology and how to connect things. How's the marketplace relationship going for you? Are you guys seeing success there? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of success. I mean, in fact, we're going to be doubling down in the next year. We're going to be, um, we haven't announced it yet, but we're going to be uh, announcing some new solutions. I guess you're not that, announcing uh, it now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to get into specifics, get into it. but we're going to be putting more and more solutions on the marketplace, and we're going to be offering more ways to, to consume and purchase our platform on the marketplace in the next couple of months. Ed, talk about what's new with Boomi real quick. I know you guys have new connectors, it's at early access. What, what's, what's been announced? What have you guys announced? What's coming? What are the, what's the new things folks should pay attention from a product standpoint? 
Yeah, so you mentioned the connectors. We've, we have 32 new connectors. And, and by the way, in our ecosystem, our customers have connected 199,970 unique things. <laughs> Amazon SQS is one of those in that number. So that's the kind okay, of scale. What's the number again? 199,970. At least that's the last I checked. <laughs> okay, really, that's good, good recall right there. Exact <laughs> yeah. number. It's an exciting number because we're scaling very, very rapidly. But the other things that are exciting are we, we announced our event streaming service that we wanted to bring to our cloud. We've relied on partners in the past to do that for us, but it's been a very critical need that our customers have asked for. So we're integrating that into our platform. Um, we're also going to be focusing more and more on our data management capabilities because I mentioned it a little earlier, connecting things, if bad data is going in and bad data is going out, bad data is going everywhere. So we have the tools and capability to govern data, manage data, high quality solutions. Uh, so we're going to invest more and more in that because that's what our customers are asking us for. Data governance is a challenge, right, for, for any business in any industry, you know, too much access is a huge risk, not enough, not enough access to the right people means you can't really extract the insights from data to be able yep. to make data-driven decisions. How do you help customers really on that fine line of data governance? We, very specifically, we have as part of our iPaaS platform, we have a data catalog and data prep uh, capability within the platform itself that gives citizens in the organization the ability to catalog data in a secure way based on what they have capabilities to. But not only that, the integrator can use data catalog to actually catalog the data and understand what needs to be integrated and how they can make their business more efficient by automating the, the movement of data and sharing of data across the organization. On the innovation side, I want to get back to that again because I think this integration, innovation angle is something that we talked about with Adam Slesky and, the, and our stories hitting Silicon Angle right now are all about the partner ecosystems. We've been highlighting some of the bigger players uh, emerging. You guys are the, out there. You got Databricks, Snowflake, MongoDB, where they're partnering with Amazon, but they're not just an ISV, they're, par they're platforms. You guys have your own ISVs. You have your own customers. You're doing low code before no, no code was popular. Yep. So, where are you guys at on that wave? You got a good customer base, share some names. What's going on with the customers? Are they becoming more developer oriented? Because, let's face it, your customers are working on Boomi. They're developers. Yes. And so they have, they got tools. Yes. You're enablers, so you're a platform. We are a platform. On Amazon. We are a platform on Amazon. We call Amazon. that super cloud. But, <laughs> yes. but that's kind of where <laughs> this new shift is happening. What's your, what's your reaction to that? Yes, so I guess we are a super cloud on Amazon and our customers and our partners are developers of our platforms themselves. So most of our partners are also customers of ours and they will be implementing their own integrations in the back end of their platforms into their back end systems to do things like billing and monitoring of their own you know, usage of their platforms. But with our customers, they're also Amazon customers who are trying to connect in a multi-cloud way or many times just within the Amazon ecosystem. Or even customers like Kenco and uh, Tim Hager who did a presentation from HealthBridge, they're also doing B2B connectivity to bring information from their partners into their ecosystem within their platform. So we handle all of the above. So now we are an independent company um, and, and it's nice to be part of uh, a central part of all of these different ecosystems. And, and where I find myself in my role a lot of times is literally connecting different platforms and applications and SI partners to solve these problems because nobody can really see it themselves. Um, they, they, and, and, you know, I had a, a conversation earlier today where someone would, I would say, hey, you're going to talk with that SI partner later today. They're a big SI partner of ours. Why don't they develop solutions that we can go to market together to solve problems for our customers? Lisa, this is something that we've been talking about a lot where it's an end conversation. The, my big takeaway from Adam's one-on-one -on -one and reInvent so far is they're not mutually exclusive. There's an end. You can be an ISV and yes. there's platforms in the ecosystem because you're enabling software developers, ISVs yes. they call it. I think that term's kind of old, old school, but still, independent software vendors, yes. that's not a platform. Right. They can coexist, and they are. Correct. And, but they're becoming, on your platform, so you're one of the most advanced Amazon partners Yes. So as cloud grows and we mature, and yeah. what, 10, 13 years old Amazon is now, so okay, you're becoming bigger as a platform. That's the next wave. What happens in that next five years from there? What, what happens next? Because if you become, your platform continues to grow, what happens next? So for us, where we're going is, is connecting, you know, platforms, you know, platform providers, cloud providers are getting bigger. 
Um, a lot of these cloud providers are embracing partnerships with other vendors and things, and we're helping connect those. So when I talk about business to business and sharing data between those, um, there, there is still some, there are still some folks that have legacy applications that need to connect and bring things in, and they're just going to ride them until they go away. That is a requirement, but at some point that's all going to fall by the wayside. But, but where the industry is really going for us is, it is about automation and quickly automating things, and again, doing more with less. Uh, I think Tim Hager had a quote where he said, um, I don't need to use Michelangelo to come paint my living room. And that's the way he thinks about low code. It's not about, you know, you don't want to just sit there and code things and, and make an art out of coding. You want to get things done quickly and you want to keep automating your business to keep pushing things forward. So a lot of the things we're looking at is not just about connecting and automating data transformation, and th that's all valuable, but how do I get someone more productive? How do I make automate the business in an intelligent way more and more to push them forward? Out of the box solutions versus yeah. platforms. Yeah. You can do both, you can build a platform. Yes. Yes. Or you can just buy out of the box. Well, well that's what's, what's great about us too, is because we don't just provide solutions, we provide solutions many times as a starting point, or as a, the way I look at it, it's art of the possible, a lot of what we give, because then our customers can take our low-code tooling and say, wow, I, I, I like this solution, but I can really take it to the next step, almost in like an open source model, and just quickly iterate and, and drive innovation that way. And, and I just love seeing our, it, a lot of it for me is just our ecosystem and our partners driving the innovation for us. And driving that speed for customers. When I had the chance to interview Tim Hager myself last month and he was talking about Boomi is enabling him to do, Boomi integration and Flow are enabling him to do integrations 10x faster yeah. than before. And, and Healthbridge built their business on Boomi. They didn't replace a legacy solution, but he had experience with some of your big competitors and chose Boomi and said, it is 10x faster. So he's able to deliver to those, and that's a, it's a great business helping or, um, people pay for um, health issues if they yep. don't have the funds to do that so much faster than they, than they could have had they chosen a different technology. Yeah, and also what I like about the, the HealthBridge story is you said they started with Boomi's technology. So, you know, I like to think we scale up and scale down. So many times when I talk to, you know, prospects or new customers, they think that our technology is too advanced or too expensive or too big for them to go after and they don't think they can solve these problems like we do with enterprises. We can start with you as a startup, going with SaaS applications, trying to be innovative in your organization to automate things, and scale, as you scale as a company, we'll be right there along with you to scale into very, very advanced solutions, all in a low-code way, so. And also helping folks to scale up and down during what we're facing, these macroeconomic headwinds. That's really important for businesses to be able to do for cost optimization, but at the end of the day, that company has to be a data company. They have to be able to, to make sure that the data matches. It's there, they know what they have. They can actually facilitate communications, conversations, and deliver what the end user customer is demanding, whether it's a retailer, a healthcare organization, a bank, you name it. Exactly, and another thing with, you know, with today's economy, a lot of people forget with integration and automation tooling, once you get things implemented, you've got to man, in, in many traditional forms, you've got to manage that long term. You have to have a team to do that. Our technology runs autonomously. I hear from our customers over and over again. I kind of, I just said it sometimes. I'll walk away for a month and come back, and wow, Boomi's still running. I didn't realize it, because we have technology that continues to patch itself, heal itself, continue running autonomously. That also saves in a time like now, where you don't have to worry about sending teams out to patch and upgrade things on a continuous basis. We take care of it for our customers. I think you guys can see a lot of growth this, uh, this, with this recession and looming. You guys fit well in the marketplace. As people figure out how to right size, you guys fit right nicely into that equation. I got to ask you, what's ahead for 2023 for Boomi? What can we expect to see? Yeah, what's ahead? I, I, I briefly mentioned it earlier, but that, the new service, we're really excited about that because it's going to allow, it's going to help our customers to scale even further and bring more workloads into AWS and more workloads that we can solve challenges for our customers. Um, we've also got additional solutions we're looking at launching on the AWS marketplace. Um, we're going to continue working with SIs and GSIs and our, our ISV ecosystem to identify more and more enterprise grade solutions and uh, verticals and industry based solutions that we can take out of the box and give to our customers. So uh, we're just going to keep growing. What are some of those key verticals? Just curious. 
So we, we're focusing on manufacturing, the financial services industry, um, and I don't know, maybe it's vertical, but higher ed's another big one for yeah, us. Yeah. So um, we have over 100 universities that use our technology in order to automate you know, grant submissions, student management of different aspects, that sort of thing. Uh, Boise State's one of them that's modernized on AWS with Boomi technology, so we're going to continue you know, rolling in that front as well. Okay, is it time for the challenge? It's time for the challenge. Are you ready for the challenge, Ed? We're springing this on you, but we know you, so we know you can nail this. Oh, no. If you were going to create your own sizzle reel, and we're creating sizzle reel that's going to go on Instagram reels, and you're going to be a star of it, what would that sizzle reel say? Like if you had a billboard or a bumper sticker, what's that about Boomi? Boom, powerful story. Well, we joked about this earlier, but I'd have to say go Boomi it. <laughs> sizzle <laughs> reel. <laughs> I don't know. Go Boomi it, go Boomi it, why? Go Boomi it, because it, it's such a succinct way of saying, uh, our customer, that, that terminology came to us for our customers, because, yeah. from our customers, because it, it, Boomi becomes a verb within an organization. They'll, they'll typically start with us and they'll solve an integration challenge or something like that, and then we become viral in a good way within an organization where our customers, Lisa, you mentioned it earlier before the show, you love talking to our customers because they're so excited and happy and love our technology. They just keep finding more ways to solve challenges and push their business forward. And, they'll and, and when a problem comes up, a, an employee will typically say to another, go boomy it. When you're a verb, that's a good thing. Yes it is. Splunk, go splunk it, that was a, <laughs> a verb for, for log files, you know, Kleenex, tissue, <laughs> you know, go we need those here. Ed, thank you so much for coming back on. The fourth, your fourth time, so now we'll, next time we see you, will be fifth time, we'll get you that five timers club jacket like they have on SNL next time. Perfect, can uh, We appreciate can't your insights, yeah, thank your you. time, and it's great to hear what's going on at Boomi, we appreciate it. Cool. Thank you. For Ed McCoskey and John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live enterprise and emerging tech coverage.